Hello, uh, this is Ferdinand. Um, I don't know how many of uh, you are sort of uh, watching this uh, live webinar. Um, um, you could, if you're using Google Hangout, you could um, also use the chat facilities. Um, but if you're uh, viewing this through um, YouTube, um, you could, um, at the end of the uh, presentation, you could send us an email if you have any questions about this. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to start this. Um, so let me know if there's any problem with microphone. So if you don't hear me properly, um, just let me know. So I can sort of see uh, what I can do with my end. Um, I'm trying to sort of make it uh, a, a slideshow, but uh, I don't know whether you could see the slideshow. So I'm just, I'm just going to carry on doing uh, what, what I have here, uh, rather than just going for a slideshow. Um, Right. So what? Um, who hosts this uh, webinar? Uh, this webinar is hosted by uh, Cube Training, and we are an NCFE approved center. Um, we provide these folk electronic security training programs, um, such as avoiding CCTV installation level three, avoiding intruder alarm installation level three, access control fire, and online courses. Um, who this course, um, sorry, it's webinar is for. Uh, it's for non-technical staff, business owners, law enforcement, uh, fire service, um, court officials, anyone who's seeking to get an overview about how CCTV installation work, how to design a CCTV system, how to use lens. Um, about myself, uh, my name is Ferdinand Joseph. Um, I'm the primary, uh, my primary job is to teach people about CCTV through the alarm and access control courses. Um, I'm also a director of Cube Security. We also provide uh, security uh, security programs for companies uh, to to prepare them for security audits. And also, uh, I'm also working as internal verifier for NCFE customized reports. Right. So, what we're going to cover here? Uh, we're going to cover. Um, uh, introduction to CCTV. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, the basic head or probably the history about CCTV systems. Uh, we're also going to cover CCTV signals, uh, CCTV lens, and then the last session will be open for any questions that you may have. Um, to start with, a um, bit of uh, history about CCTV systems. Um, CCTV system or closed circuit uh, television uh, is a closed network. Um, the first CCTV system was used by Nazi Germany to absorb V2 rockets in 1942. Uh, but that system was just a monitoring system. It was not recording. Um, in 1968, Olin, New York, was the first city to use CCTV system in effect to fight against crime. Um, CCTV systems is used in various applications, um, crime prevention, industrial process, traffic monitoring, transport safety, um, sports um, monitor to monitor employees, educational institutions, uh, and to fight against crime. Um, so what are the basic components of a CCTV systems? Um, camera, um, recorders, we have different types of recorders, uh, digital video recorders, uh, network video recorders, and the latest addition to it is called hybrid video recorders. Uh, you got display units, you could use um, any type of display units. Um, cables, um, there are different types of cables that you could use. Uh, power supply units, uh, these are basic components. Obviously, you have other components um, in, in, in a complicated or complex CCTV system. Right, let's start with cameras. Um, so how would you put cameras into different categories? Or if you are to buy uh, a CCTV camera, what you would look for? Um, I would say CCTV camera, um, can, it is quite difficult to put them into different categories. Um, so you have to first decide what you're going to use as a base to categorize the cameras. I would say the best thing to use it would be the signal type. Um, so you have different types of cameras, but based on signal, um, you got uh, the main two types of cameras that you could buy would be analog and digital. Um, so we're going to look into um, these two types, analog, what analog camera is, what digital camera is. Um, analog camera, analog camera um, transmit video uh, as analog signals uh, to a receiving device. So it could be your recorder or monitor. Uh, analog cameras uh, either use uh, uh, either use NTSC or, or PAL, uh, NTSC uh, in, in, in 
certain part of America and then parts uh, in UK and part, in certain parts in Europe. Um, analog signals are limited to uh, 0.3 megapixel if it's NTSC and if, if it's PAL then it is 0.4 megapixel. So it's not full uh, HD or one megapixel. Um, so how does an analog signal look like? Um, it's um, it's looks like wave. Um, so you can see um, analog signals uh, varies uh, continuously. So it won't stay at one level. Um, so you get cameras sometimes uh, looking better and sometimes it may not look to its optimal level. So that's how analog signals work. Um, so how do you know it's an analog camera? Um, so when you look at a camera, you would see uh, the BNC input. So when you see a BNC input, and uh, that gives you a clue that's an analog camera. Um, by looking at a camera, you will never know whether it's an analog camera or digital camera, because um, uh, it's just the shape uh, or housing of the camera. But by looking at the connection of the camera, you could establish whether it's analog or digital camera. Um, analog cameras, um, they predominantly use coaxial cable, or known as coax cable. Um, if you want to be more specific, it's um, the most used one is RG59. Um, in some cases, it's also used um, UTP cable, um, Cat5, Cat6, uh, to send signals. Uh, video signals are stored in a video recorder, um, and analog cameras are fitted with either um, CCD or CMOS sensors. Um, so let's look at how an analog camera is installed. Um, you get an analog camera there, you got the coax cable. So I'm just using the coax cable um, here, and it's just connected to a recorder. And then the recorder is then connected to a display, so you could now see the display. So it's pretty straightforward. And um, it's nothing uh, complicated about installing an analog camera. Um, but what I'm missing here is probably you need to power this camera, so it has to have a power supply here. Uh, the maximum distance you could run this cable, it depends on the camera that you're using. So if you're using a conventional analog cameras, the maximum distance would be 200 meters uh, for black and white signals and 100 meters for color signals. Um, but if you're using you know, high definition cameras, that could be uh, um, 500 meters for color. Uh, so it, it varies, it depends on what type of cameras you're using. Um, digital cameras, so digital cameras or sometimes also known as IP cameras, I would rather use the term digital uh, then IP, because IP is internet protocol, that's addressing techniques that we use in network. Um, so these cameras used internet protocol to send data. Uh, so the signal travels in the form of data. So they can only have two forms, um, plus or minus, or I can call it one or zero binary. Um, so IP cameras or digital cameras are more like a mini digital recorder. So it, and some of them also have an inbuilt SD card so you could record video footage. Um, IP cameras are normally connected to an NVR and um, 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 or you can work um, on its own as well, so or server. So I've got a, another picture of an IP camera. So how do you know it's IP camera? So by looking at a camera, you would never know it's IP camera. Um, but when you look at the interface of the camera, um, it tells you it's an IP camera. And I can see that that's a, that's a Cat5 cable. So when there's a Category 5 cable or any Category 6 cable presence, then you know it's an IP camera. Um, now I got... Um, uh, how the signal travels with the digital uh, cameras. The signals can take two forms. Um, it can uh, go uh, zero or one. So one and zeros binaries, and that's how the signal travels. So for us as CCTV installers, IP cameras, um, if you install IP cameras, or you don't get the picture, you're not gonna get in between. So, um, so if, if you get a picture, you're gonna get the maximum. So that's how the IP cameras work. Um, the first IP camera was made by Axis in uh, 1996. Axis uh, was doing a uh, network search before uh, they went into IP camera uh, manufacturing. Um, so they were the pioneer in, in, uh, in introducing IP cameras. Um, 
Um, some some IP cameras, as I said before, uh, do have an inbuilt storage, so the camera itself can work a, work as a mini DVR. Um, so, what are the differences um, between IP and analog cameras? Uh, the primary difference uh, between IP and analog camera is the signal type. Um, an IP camera uh, signals goes as uh, binary, an analog camera signal goes as analog signal. Um, but um, the other difference um, could be that um, IP camera itself encodes the signals, um, whereas the analog camera, the signal is sent to a recorder and recorder encodes the signals. Um, so if you look at the signals, uh, that's how the signal travels. Uh, on analog cameras, it goes like a wave. Um, so as I mentioned before, you could have a uh, camera installed, but it's not giving you the maximum, so you might have pictures not very clear and so on. Uh, whereas IP cameras, uh, it, can, it goes as plus one and zero, so you could now see that it just goes as one and zero. So either you get the picture or you get nothing. Right, so let's look at uh, an, an installation of um, uh, on an IP camera. Um, IP camera, it's exactly the same camera. It's got an optical lens which takes the lights and the image um, sensor will process the picture. Um, it's, it's all analog and it has a processor inbuilt. We then convert the analog signal into digital. So now you can connect the CAT5 cable. The signal um, that comes out from IP camera, it comes in the form of uh, digital. So you can now see that. Um, but then you can have POE cameras and normal IP cameras. If a POE camera, the CAT5 signal also brings power to this camera. Um, let's look at analog uh, setup. You've got an analog camera. Uh, we then produce the signal in uh, analog forms. Um, it's connected to a, a digital, we call it digital video recorder. Um, then there, it then converts into a digital signal, ones and zero. So once this is connected to a, a network, um, then you could use any networkable device to view the signal. Uh, for instance, like you seeing the analog uh, cameras through your phones, um, you're connecting to the digital video recorder rather uh, to, to the camera. So the digital video recorder will then have all the video footage of that camera converted into digital form. And when you're accessing through your mobile phones, you're accessing the DVR. Um, you, most, most cameras, um, um, you, you, you require to um, supply power. So there's a power supply, I've just shown the power supply there. Um, some cameras do work with batteries, um, but it, um, it's very common that you provide power for cameras. Um, so um, what are the main sort of other difference um, between IP and uh, analog cameras? A lot of people prefer IP cameras um, because they do um, give you a higher resolution. Um, whereas uh, analog cameras, uh, the maximum resolution you get would be probably D1 or 960. So I will explain about 960 and D1 later. Uh, so D1 resolution is um, 720 by 4. Um, 80 pixel, that's when it's NTSC. Um, and a PAL, you get a little bit extra, 720 by 576. Now, if you multiply that, you then get to know how many pixels you are getting, right? Now, for example, in a PAL, you're getting 414 720 pixel, which is um, known as uh, 0.4 megapixel. So when someone sells your camera saying two megapixel camera, that's a full HD. Okay, right. So on a, IP camera, the standard resolution start from half HD, which is uh, 1280 times 720, right? Which gives you slightly smaller, um, slightly lower figure than, than uh, 100, uh, 1 million, right? Um, whereas 2.1080p, um, so if you multiply 1920 by 1080, uh, that gives, gives you two megapixel cameras, that's two million pixel cameras. Um, some of the cameras, access cameras, gives you up to 5.2 meg, uh, megapixel, which is 5.2 million pixels. Um, so with the IP camera, there is no cap. So you could get cameras with um, two uh, 
uh, megapixel or five megapixel, four megapixel, there's no cap. Whereas the analog camera is concerned, um, the maximum you can go probably 0.4 megapixel if it's um, PAL, but if it's um, NTSC, it's probably less than that. Um, so let's go to the next one. Right, this gives you an idea of this resolution's work. Um, you got the full HD, uh, which is 1080 by 1920. So that's your full HD uh, picture, right, you know, resolutions. So that's normally when people say it's two megapixel cameras, um, that means it's a full HD 920 by uh, 1080. Um, HD ready, or known as half HD, will be uh, 1280 by 720. That's also IP cameras. Um, you can still find IP cameras, which gives you half HD. Um, analog, which is kind of um, faded now. Uh, you don't get a lot of analog cameras in the market at the moment. Uh, but analog cameras were initially giving you like um, 480 by 720 on NTSCs and on and Pali was giving 576 by 720, which is a D1 resolution. Um, and then they had another one and that probably comes in between the 720 and D1, which is known as 960H. Um, but again, um, it has become very hard to find the analog camera nowadays. Um, so it's kind of faded. Um, uh, it's been replaced by a high definition analog camera, which can again give you the full HD, which is um, 1080, um, nine, sorry, 920 by 1080. Right. Um, um, in some cases, you may have experience that you installed a high definition camera uh, to a standard monitor and you don't seem to get a good output uh, or the resolutions are uh, not in high resolution. Uh, it happens because you your standard monitor use VGA, video graphic arrays, which was developed by IBM. Um, where the resolution is capped to 640, um, 480, which is 0.3 megapixels. So if you connect a camera, which is, uh, um, say, 1080p, you're not going to see the full optimum uh, resolutions there. Um, so if you're connecting a full HD cameras, uh, you also have to bear in mind you need a better uh, monitor to display it. So I've got a picture here. Um, so I've got, in fact, two pictures. Um, one was taken by analog camera. One was taken by digital camera. On analog cam camera, um, I can I can still see the car. Everything um, looks fine. Um, but if I want to see the number plate uh, on a digital camera, it's more visible compared to the analog camera. So um, because it was taken a higher resolution. So digital cameras are better in terms of resolution. Okay, so the difference between analog and digital cameras. Um, analog cameras, I'm going to talk about the good things about analog cameras. Analog CCD systems are often less expensive. Um, well, analog cameras you could buy for a cheaper price. Um, and, and this includes like uh, high definition cameras. Even a high definition cameras can be bought for a very reasonable price. Um, analog CCD systems are easier to maintain. So the, the installation itself is very pretty straightforward. There's nothing complicated about the installation, so it's easy to maintain them. Um, lower cable runs with analog cameras, uh, sorry, longer cable runs. The analog cable, uh, ca cameras um, can take the signal for a longer distance uh, using quartz cable. Um, the latest high definition cameras offers you 500 meter run, so which is a fantastic distance um, um, when you compare with IP cameras. With IP cameras, if he's using a one gig data, uh, most probably, you be able to run up 200 meters. Then you probably need a switch panel, uh, patch panel before you go to the next uh, point. Uh, so that is something to bear in mind when you do IP installation. Uh, analog cameras are pretty um, easy to mix and match. So you could connect analog camera to a DVR, then the DVR can be connected to IP system. So it gives you kind of a solution that you could uh, mix and match. Um, and then also the important thing about analog camera is it's real time. So when, when you connect a camera, when you see it on the picture on, 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 on the display, it's real time. Uh, you're not going to see time lags. Uh, on an IP camera, you will see a time lag because the camera need to take the picture and then need to convert into analog, uh, sort of digital. So that 
conversion process need a bit of a time. So you would see a time lag on a digital camera, whereas analog camera is very real time. Um, now look at uh, now we're going to look at uh, the advantages of having IP cameras. IP cameras have gives you superior image quality. Uh, it gives you a better resolution. As I mentioned before, there is no cap. You could have uh, 3K, 4K, 5K. You know um, the resolutions. Um, it, it's um, there's no cap. Um, so with analog cameras, yeah, there's pretty much capped. Even with high definition cameras, the maximum resolution you can get at the moment is full HD, which is uh, uh, two megapixel. But with digital or IP cameras, you could go up to sort of 4K, um, and in future you may get uh, even better resolutions. Um, megapixel cameras uh, cover much wider area uh, than analog. Uh, so if you look at the screen. Um, you can see that it, it covers a wide area. So the width is a uh, bit, um, you get a, a wide area coverage compared to analog signals. So that's another advantage of um, IP cameras. Um, IP system offer uh, much more data analysis. Um, basically, um, because it's a binary um, camera, the data, the signal has been converted into um, data. So you could now do a lot of search function. For example, you could, you know, you could uh, uh, do say various um, parameter setup. Um, you could say it's a one-way traffic. So any cars that come from the opposite direction, it's going to pick the number plate up. So those kind of things you could do it with uh, IP systems. And uh, another advantage of IP system is that it is easily you can integrate it with other security uh, devices like uh, intruder alarm, access control, and fire alarm. Because um, most of these devices like uh, intruder alarm, access control, fire alarm, nowadays use IP. So um, using IP camera, it's an advantage that you can now integrate them into one solution. So it will be like more of a one solution for your customers. Um, so you could take an example, example like um, home automation systems nowadays, it's uh, use IP. Um, so I'm going to go to the next slide, which we're going to talk about uh, CCTV lens. Um, so it's quite important to understand how the CCTV lens work, because um, I've come across situations where you install the camera and um, then something happened. You play, um, you do a, a playback and um, you see the person, but it's not good enough. Um, you, can't, you, you can't identify who the person is. Um, so why this all happened? Because the, the correct lens were not used. So it is important to find out what you require and then do a calculation and, and, and to fit the right lens or select the right cameras. So, um, so that's what it is about. So uh, for, for example, let's say it is to establish the field of view. Uh, so first of all, you need to decide what you're trying to cover um, uh, and then again, uh, you can now use formula, CCTV lens calculator, um, that will then tell you what the correct size of lens to go with. So here we got a small example. Um, let's say you want to see a person from a distance of 10 meters, right? Um, so you're installing a camera at a distance of 10 meters, and you want to cover this man, right? So the man is uh, standing at a, a six feet tall, right? system so you, you're more concerned about the height rather than the width um, so I can just call it two meter height so now you know the distance that's 10 meters and then also you know what you're trying to cover is the height of two meters now you can use the height or the width and you can't use both because that is a proportion of your sensor size right um, so that means you also need to know what sensor that you're using right In this example we're using a sensor uh, CCD sensor, which is one third inch, right? That's the most common sensor that we use. So if you see if you see the sensor size, um, later I'm going to have pictures to show you where the sensor. You know, if you, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, um, it's the size of the sensor. So that's 3.6 millimeter height um, and the width of 4.8 millimeter, right? So this is what I'm talking about, right? The distance is 10 meters. The height is two meter, right? We're trying to find what the right lens to use, and we know this camera that we're using is fitted with one third inch sensor CCD, for example, 
right? So that's the formula. So the sensor height is 3.6, times it by the distance, that's 10, divided by the scene height, which is 2. And that gives us 18 millimeter. Now, there are a lot of CCTV lens calculators um, that you could download or apps. And you could apply these figures and then see what you get. It will be exactly the same results. OK, so this is what I'm talking about. Now, I'm using a 2.8 millimeter lens. I can see the whole room there. That's myself, right? Um, now, what happens if I increase the lens size? As soon as I increase the lens size, I've I'm just getting a close-up view of myself, but then again, the blind spot is huge here because I don't see the dough, for example. The dough is not there, and all this area is not covered. So <clears throat> the, the idea is that um, if you use a higher number, you get you, you get a longer distance covered, but the, the area that you're going to cover will be narrow. Um, so that's what you get inside a camera, which is the board. And that's the lens. So that's the lens um, that sits on this sensor. So you can, you can now see the sensor size there. That's the sensor size we're talking about. That's a one third. So the, the height of this sensor is 3.6 and the width is 4.8. So the picture that you get is, is a direct proportion of the sensor size, right? Um, so you could buy cameras with different sensor size. So, but the most common one is one third. So hence we use one third and then we try to find what the correct lens to use, right? So this is how it works, right? You've got the sensor here, which is one third. The height is 4.8, 3.6 millimeter. And then you've got the lens here, which is sitting on the sensor. That's your field of view, right? And depends on the distance between your sensor and your lens, the field of view is going to differ. So the more distance you have, uh, the narrow the area you cover, but the longer the distance you reach. The less of the distance you have, the wider the area you cover, but the less of the distance you reach. So you'll probably see like two types of um, sensors, CCD and CMOS. Uh, in another uh, webinar, I'll be talking about the difference between them. Um, um, but anyway, they, 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 they're sort of similar. So what we're talking about here, that's your lens, and that's where the sensor is located, right? So there are different types of, uh, different sizes that you could get, um, sensors, um, um, one third, half an inch, and one inch. So the bigger the sensor size you go for, the wider the area you cover, but one third is the most common one. So if you say one third, that's 4.8 by 3.6. 3.6 is your height. Right, so um, just going back to the uh, example that we were looking at before. Um, so I've got um, the diagram here, which shows that 10 meters I'm trying to cover. Um, uh, 10 meter is, is the distance, and what I'm trying to cover is a 2 meter height. And once I apply that into the formula, I get 18 millimeters. So the lens that I need to fit there is 18 millimeter. Now, based on this lens, you could now categorize cameras into different categories. Now, what we looked before was uh, we categorized the cameras based on the signal type, but now you lose, using the lens, you can now put them into different categories. Uh, the first one is the prefix lens cameras. So the lens is already fitted into the camera, both, so you don't have the option of uh, changing it or just fitting another lens. So you just have to settle with that. Now this happened often with when you buy camera kits, so you only get 3.6 millimeter lens. Um, so if you want a camera to do a different function than the other cameras, it'll be pretty harder unless you just, you know, change the distance between the camera and the object. Um, very focal camera, um, known as um, the cameras that has uh, a variance with the lens size. So you, you, you could adjust the lens size, right? For example, most often you're going to get very focal cameras with 2.8 millimeter to 12 millimeter. So you can adjust the lens size there. Um, then you have box cameras. Box cameras are fully customizable cameras. So you don't get lens with the camera. You just get the box. And then you go and buy, buy the uh, correct lens uh, size and, and fit that into the box camera. So I've got pictures of them. So I'll show you how they look like. right? And the last type is speed set, pan tilt zoom cameras. Now, they, they are used for different purpose. So you can't um, use them. Um, for every single application, and, and also they're quite dear with the price. 
So I'm going to look at um, uh, a very focal camera. It just looks like a normal camera, but you do have a, you have two screws here, focus and zoom, which you could adjust so that the lens or your field of view can be changed. Um, so these cameras cost you slightly um, expensive than a normal camera, but it's worth because um, um, once you install it, then you can adjust the lens size. But often you don't have a huge range. It comes like 2.8 to 12 millimeters. So if you want a 16 millimeter, you're going to struggle there, right? So, but then in that case, you could use a box camera. So that's just the box you buy and you just go and buy uh, the right size of um, uh, lens and then you connect it to the camera. Um, the last type is the Peter set cameras. You've probably seen them, right? Um, thank you for listening to me. Um, I don't know whether the technology is to, you know, uh, was there because um, I was trying to make this screen bigger, but I could do it. So I'll figure out how it can be done next time. Um, hopefully you enjoyed um, this webinar. And if you've got any questions, um, you could uh, send your questions to um, us. You could write to us or you could email us or you could come to our website and and you could chat with us um so thank you so much again and uh, i'll see you in another webinar thank you